I do not know anything about the rainwater. I do not know anything about rainwater analyses. Um, if anything has been sent to my agency, I can take a look at it and get information back to folks if you want to leave a name. Uh, I do not know anything about rainwater. Like I said, I'm not a science person. Blood and hair analyses, those you need to talk to your physicians about. And your physicians should be able to direct you as to what to do. They cannot. The Department of Environmental Quality has no medical professionals. So that is completely outside our, our area. So I, our position on any kind of medical condition or any kind of medical issue always has been and always will be to speak to your medical professionals. We are not medical professionals. As far as soil samples go, I do not know if there have been any soil samples collected in the area. Uh, generally, unless we have a remediation project going on in an area, we don't collect soil samples. The reason that we don't collect soil samples, unless there's something going on, which also brings me to our ability to investigate, is if we don't have jurisdiction over a particular area, we also don't have jurisdiction to spend money on a particular item or a particular area. So the, the legislature gives us authority to regulate things and allows us to spend money on those things. If we do not have the authority to regulate something, we don't have the authority to collect samples or to spend money investigating it. How do you test the air? <clears throat> How do we test the air? Yeah. Um, I, again, I'm not a science person. I know that we have air monitors that draw air in and filters are collected. I don't know where they are. I'm, I'm not a science person. My name is Diane Lane. I'm from Kingman. I'd like to know exactly what would initiate an investigation or a soil sample or a blood or hair sample, what would it take to instigate you people to do that? We would have to have a release of some sort that's under our jurisdiction. And she's been waiting. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I am assuming you do have scientists in your organization, is that correct? We do, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I'm one of the, my name is Michelle Arnett and I'm from Bullhead City. And I'm one of the several who have had my blood tested because I was getting sick and, and I didn't know why. And I did go to my doctor and he had some question on how to order these specific tests for heavy metals. And when the results came back and they were really out of line, he said he had never seen anything like it in his life and he didn't have a clue what to do about it. And then the bottom line was he said, I think you're just going to have to live with it and I want to be healthy. So just out of curiosity, how many of you in here have had your blood tested? Raise your hands. Okay, thank you. We got a couple of folks in the back. I, I won't lose you, I promise. Sorry. We'll try to get to all of you. Yeah. Is it your belief that federal law trumps state law in all cases, even if it's unconstitutional? I'm Dan Kemp. I'm from Henderson, Nevada. It is my belief that Article 6 of the Constitution does preempt state law in this particular situation. Is that the gen was that general welfare that's clause? That's the supremacy clause. Supremacy clause. That's the supremacy clause. Uh, and in this particular area of aviation regulation, the federal government has fully occupied the field and there is no room for state. So all federal law 
trumps state law according to the supremacy clause. Is that your belief? What if you were wrong on that? Uh, I don't believe that that works across the board. I'd have to. You don't have to be I'd an attorney to. Take to a look. I'd have to take a look at the case law. I don't. That's not. Just look at the Constitution. You know, you're, you don't have to be a constitutional attorney to interpret the Constitution. It's pretty plain language. And so uh, that's, that's kind of uh, wrong-headed thinking I think you have there that, that is shared by a lot of people, not just yourself. So that's, what, that's kind of what we're butting our heads against in meetings like this. So that's all I got. Beth? Beth, we've got two folks over here. Uh, Todd Howard from Kingman. I understand your skepticism, I really do. But I have a couple questions for you. Not to, not to uh, uh, come up against you, but to try to get your, your, uh, institu your agency moving. The ADEQ? Uh, yes, sir, ADEQ. As a mission statement, does it not? It was created for a purpose. It does. Can you tell us what that is? If I can read it, I certainly can. Our mission statement is to lead, oh, I'm sorry, to protect and enhance public health and the environment in Arizona. Very good. Okay, my second question to you is this. Now, if these people have evidence, if they, if they have enough accumulated evidence to be of interest, can you tell us who to send it to to get an investigation going? Because if their health is in danger, that's within your mission statement. My third question to you is, if there is sufficient evidence to, to invoke your jurisdiction for the purposes of your mission statement, can the state of Arizona, through your office or through someone else, file that complaint for, against the federal government and get something moving? So can you tell us who to send our evidence to? Who are these scientists in your department that we could send it to? The problem is we have no jurisdiction over this issue, so sending it to our scientists won't help. We can't do anything. Why do you not have jurisdiction if your mission statement has to do with public health and they have evidence that their health may be being affected? Not by engine emissions, but apparently by a deliberate spraying effort. When does your mission statement bring in your jurisdiction in the interest of the people of the, of the state that you're apparently intended to protect. If you can't do that, what is the purpose of your department? So who do we send our evidence to to get our public servants moving? Certainly. No, that's, that's, a valid, that's a valid question and uh, I'm honestly not sure who you could send them to because we would not have jurisdiction, okay? So I would send you back, I would send you back to the EPA or to the FAA because we would not have jurisdiction over such an issue. Thank you, my name's Corey Gunnels and I came here from Prescott, Arizona. I moved here about four years ago from Minneapolis area. I have two questions. For Senator Ward, thank you for agreeing to, you know, carry on with this meeting. In my family, I have people who have been in the House of Representatives, lawyers, um, was married for many, many years to a physician. And I hope I can speak to this well. It's an emotional thing for me. Um, in my family, I've had five people um, die from brain tumors in the last 10 years, and two friends. 
And when I look at this issue, like any of us, I always remind people that at one time we don't know, we don't see. And we look up and we wonder. And if we are responsible, we look into it. When we look into it and we do our research, we find certainty. <sighs> Sorry. Um, I'm speaking, when I was driving today, I, I, I'm going to back up and say I didn't know what I wanted to say today, but then it, I remembered I could speak for people who can't. And I think if I looked back, there are probably many people sitting here who feel the same, who have people in their lives that maybe are gone, who can't speak, so they speak for them. Dr. Russell Blaylock is a retired neurosurgeon. He is world renowned. He's very concerned about this issue. He sees aluminum in a nano particulate size as extremely worrisome. So, Senator Ward, thank you again. But I want to know why the EPA and the FAA aren't here. So, and I, I, you know, Sherry, you're doing a good job. Thank you. But you don't have jurisdiction. I don't. So I feel like we're in a quandary. I just want to say that for me, as an Arizona state senator, I only have um, connections with the people within Arizona who I can bring to you as experts. Um, I do have great connections with Congressman Gosar and with many people in our congressional delegation as well. Perhaps we can get them at some point to bring someone from the EPA or from the FAA or from the DOT to come and speak to a group such as this. But this is just, you know, this is the beginning of information and education um, and the exchange so that you all can let these guys know what what is concerning you and why. So so this is the, the first step. I, I know it's frustrating to go in little increments at a time and everyone wishes we'd have big sweeping change, but believe me, when we have big sweeping change, that's when we get a lot of unintended consequences. So um, this is the first little you know baby step bite out of a problem that's very concerning to everybody in this audience. Okay, okay. I got to go to this side for a couple minutes. So yes, go ahead. Thank you very much. My name is Luca Zanna. I'd like to, and uh, I, live, I live in Golden Valley. First of all, thank you for driving all the way here. I know it's very hot. Thank you, Senator, for starting to move the ball rolling. As she said, we need to do small steps. But let me tell you, more important, I want to thank you and all the people that have been pushing this issue the last few years. Because without this, no senator, no state would have even care about all this. So we must thank ourselves, and I really mean it, okay? Um, I appreciate you coming. I understand already, according to different newspapers, that pretty much you're here just to make some statement of jurisdiction. I read here, for example, Arizona Department of uh, Environmental Quality will make a short presentation at the meeting, and the department lack of regulatory authority over any type of chemical spraying, according to the Department of Communications Director Mark Schaffer. Question is, I wish, since this is our tax dollar, this room, cost, electricity, air conditioning, your time, I'm sure you know for free, and uh, we are the one pretty much pay for all this, you could have sent us a fax or maybe an email, because if they're really what the state is telling us, that pretty much you have no jurisdiction, and according also to another article, even if you would admit that there is a problem coming from this type of environment, we're talking about the airplanes, you still will, couldn't do anything. I wish there was something like more, maybe some scientists, because I tell you something, I'm not even going to approach this from a point of view of uh, geoengineering, weather modification. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about there is a real serious crisis, health crisis, documented, and officially I would like to serve you right now, not as a legal, but as a document that I already sent the register to the governor, to Senator Farmer, Senator Gould, for a, the, the former representative of our district. There are like at least 12 blood tests here, uh, created by official laboratory with real doctors, MD, and uh, all this 